Today's going to be all about drawing horses, so get up, partner. Should I keep the hat on? I'm going to keep the hat on. So when it comes to drawing horses, there's a couple things that we got to break down. You know we're going to break it down. This is an art lesson video. But I do want to say that horses are actually one of the best animals to learn to draw because it's kind of a good base point to then draw all the other animals from. Learning how to break down a horse can lead to learning how to break down any animal. Um, so you could potentially take this as the lesson of how to draw any animal out there. So first thing when it comes to drawing any animal, again, is having a diagram of the anatomy. So these diagrams that I have come from my animal anatomy book for artists. And you can see that you get a variety of different angles and they explore everything from the muscles to the skeletal structure to the outside of what it looks like you know, every day, right? If you have any interest in drawing animals, grabbing a book like this or grabbing this book is going to help you out so much. And I looked up on Amazon, I'm gonna put a link below. They're not paying me, but it's literally only like 14 bucks for this. And there's a lot of information here. So seriously, get on it. If you got more animal questions, come on. So that being said, this is a great starting point to kind of learn how to break down these animals. Again, learning to break something down is understanding kind of the simple shapes of what it's made of. Now, overall, this isn't going to be an animal anatomy lesson, but I do kind of want to mention a few things. When it comes to the head of the horse, you kind of have something iconic. They have this really big cheek. Um, and then of course laying in there is a really big cheek muscle. This is for grinding grain, okay? Grain's pretty tough to grind down. And you see they have this whole row of teeth here and they need that chomping power. This shows up as a nice kind of almost circular shape on the horse's face. So this is something that you can really just kind of zone in on. And as long as you can get this shape plus a bit of a rectangle in there, honestly, you're at a great point. From here you can kind of build up from there and start adding some horse features but this is one of the best kind of cheat sheets to start with in order to start building your horse from there when it comes to front facing view we're going to talk about all the views here so don't worry when it comes to the front face you have kind of like this kite shape so if you can see here um it's it's kind of smaller at the top of this this triangle we have here and then a nice long triangle going down now you can think of this as a couple ways you can think of it as that triangle shape so you can do something like that. And then you can add kind of like a square shape on here at the bottom, which is where their nose and their mouth and everything's gonna fit. So that square shape is actually gonna come out a bit wider as you can see in this diagram right here. But starting with that kite shape is gonna really help you build up. And it kind of gives you a pretty good indication of where the eyes are gonna fall because they fall just as that kite turns the corner into the second triangle. So this is gonna be our base point for heads. Let's talk a little bit about bodies. So just like we did with the anatomy, we also want to be able to look at the outside of the body and be able to break it down into shapes. Now shapes should come out at you pretty immediate here. You have a nice kind of tapered wedge shape here that I always notice within a horse. And then here I like to kind of take an example from those how to draw books where it always tells you to draw two circles when you're drawing a horse, but it, it really does work. So you kind of just give yourself a loose circle here and then a loose circle in the back. Now this isn't gonna indicate how it's gonna end up being. The reason I like this though is because it has a nice dip here, which is where someone would sit on a saddle, right? And then you also have a nice dip here in the stomach. So it's connecting between these two circular points. So having these two circles and then having this kind of like hammock hanging in between them is a really good way to start your body shape. When it comes to legs, this is where it gets a little complicated. So I threw up two diagrams I did here of the horse, which is actually a really good practice. We'll get back to that in a second. Looking at that skeletal structure, if you guys can see, you get this really interesting zigzag shape that happens in the horse's legs. It happens in the front leg and it also happens here within the back leg as well. You might not think this is important, but it really is and it really matters to when you're drawing a horse. So really quick, I put down what we just talked about. Now, if I don't know about animal anatomy and I don't know how their legs look, what I'm probably gonna end up doing is just trying to draw something like this and maybe, I don't know, like try to think about it countering some of the weight and there's a hoof there. Now, even if you draw this, this hoof nice and big, you can see that that doesn't look right. This looks like maybe it's gonna be a rocking horse or something, right, for a kid. So what if we tried the back leg? Well, I mean, I can remember that the back legs are big um, and then maybe it comes 
down like that. So you can see that like I kind of recognize what's happening because we've all seen horses before. So my brain is kind of piecing it together. But when you don't know what's happening, it looks off. So again, understanding the anatomy is really gonna be key here. So when I'm drawing the legs, I like to kind of see this. I look for the scapula and then I'm gonna remember that this comes across this bone right here. This little point pushing out is the arm coming through. Um, off of the shoulder, right? So it's really part of the shoulder blade kind of starting into the arm. Here you have a bone coming back, creating this elbow shape. It goes over and then it still goes down and then one more joint down. So this is a pretty big deal. Understanding that there's one, two, three, four arm bones just in the front one, and then five if you count that shoulder blade, right? That makes a big difference from us where we have essentially one, two. To find the back leg, it's a little more simple because you can find the pelvic bone, and the pelvic bone is where you have these little bumps protruding here. So you just go ahead in and put the bone in there as a tilt. We're not really gonna get into the, you know, the full details here. And then from here, you know that the bone is just gonna come down. Look for your bony landmarks like this, where you see like these protrusions in the skin. And then you know from here it's gonna come down. You have this calcaneus bone that sticks out here, and then it comes down again, and there's a the last joint, and then it comes into another foot right before it goes into the hoof. So again, you have that one, two, three, four. So you might be saying right now, okay, Josh, this is kind of basic and generic. Why are we learning simple shapes like how to draw books? Because the main question I got was how do you draw horses from the front or from the back? Generally, we all know what a horse looks like from the side. We've seen it many times in movies and we've seen the front view, but we just don't recognize it as easily. If I get rid of the picture and we keep our shapes over here and I just think of them as 3D shapes in space, right? So we have like two balls, a kind of wedge, uh, maybe pyramid-ish shape, um, and then that rectangular head. Now, if I think about these rotating in space, all of a sudden it, it becomes easier to picture and to kind of place together a little more from your imagination. So we have a ball, and then I know the other ball is in front of it, probably bigger because we're thinking about perspective here, right? And then somewhere on top of this ball, we have our next shape, which we know is a tapering wedge. And then of course we know, we just looked at it, if we're looking for that front head shape, well, we have somewhat of a kite shape going on, right? So we can add that in and we can kind of piece it together and figure it out from there. Obviously this is not going to be at the end of the day what your horse looks like and you're gonna come in and kind of figure things out a little more solid, but we're gonna take a look at some of these front facing view pictures of horses and you're gonna see that this is kind of the process that I use to draw it. Really quickly, let's just test my theory. So we have this same horse, but now it's running from the front view. And so let's take a look at it. So remember, we're thinking about that circle shape and we can see that we now have another circle shape back here. It's getting overlapped. From this view, if you think about it, it looks like you actually have three circle shapes because that stomach, they have a nice protruding stomach really strong muscle based, um, it kind of sticks out a little bit further and then you have this squared off back shape. So you kind of have three circles or three cubes receding back in space. And from here, this gives you a pretty good indication of where things are. And then just to prove my kite theory, you know, right here you can see we have that nice kite shape. And of course you can come in and put that square snout on. So you guys are gonna see, I have a bunch of drawings of horses that we're gonna go through. I'm gonna show you my process, but this is really at the end of the day, how I kind of approached all of these drawings. I just wanted you guys to go in with that knowledge. So last tip here, before we get into the actual drawing portion, one of the best ways that you can learn any animal, in this case, the horse, is to start with a silhouetted side view of the horse, layer in the bone structure, figure out the bone structure using an anatomy book or whatever sources you can find online. And then on top of that, you layer on the muscle. And then on top of that, you come in and you finish the picture, layering on the skin and trying to exaggerate and play up some of those muscle features. So kind of playing up where the light is hitting in, you know, in, in some of those curves of a more muscular horse. These examples here are not the greatest. This is something that I did many years ago when I was back in art school, but the point still stands. And this is the reason that I have a base understanding of what's happening with the horse. And generally, even if I'm having a crappy day, I can draw a pretty convincing horse. All right, guys, so now we're gonna go into the drawing portion here. So if you've seen my life drawing videos, this is gonna be a little different. 
We're not doing timed or anything. We're just kind of exploring here and just taking some of the ideas that I just talked about in quite some extent and applying them here. So I drew a lot of horses um, and I did have to take some out, but we're going to talk about what I think is the important and vital poses here and kind of go from there. So of course we talked about the head and the head structure and the head anatomy. So we're going to apply that. So we have a pretty nice side view here of the horse. And I just want us to make sure we're looking at that, understanding it, seeing that side cheek, that side cheek is so dominant to me. Um, and then kind of like starting to place and understand its other features as well. Now, whenever I draw anything that I don't draw often, or I just need to be accurate, I am definitely going into my picture and measuring and picking things out in comparison. So I'm kind of saying like, okay, where is the eye in comparison to the, sh like if I drew a straight line up from the eye to the ear on the picture, where does that line up, right? And then I'm gonna try to apply that then to my picture. Now, something I wanna say too, is that even if your proportions are off, even if your drawing is wrong, you're not getting everything the same size. If you're following the structure, you're following the idea and some of the things that I mentioned earlier in the video, you're gonna notice that you still have a pretty convincing horse at the end of the day. And this is gonna be part of the building process. All right, so next we got kite face here. Um, so just remember, Again, you want to start with that kite shape where it's short and stout on the top, nice and long going down to the nostril. Um, I, you know, remember, these are just simple shapes to start with. And if you guys have seen any of my videos, you know that I'm a pretty big ad advocate for starting with those simple shapes and then building off of them. So this is no different. I started with my kite shape and I started to build up the structure from there. Now you can start to see things too. Like you can see a little bit of that cheek shape kind of poking out. Um, and you can start to add those as well once you get comfortable and once you start finding your pose a little bit. For me, that kite shape really does help with finding those eyeballs in my opinion. So it, it kind of just gives you the brow and then you can perfectly find those really big horse eyes on there. And you can make them as expressive as you want. Something I struggle with when I'm drawing these guys is, I mean, they have really big eyes. If you guys have ever seen a horse in person, they're got some pretty big eyes. They're big animals. Um, but I always draw the eyes too big. It's kind of a fault that I have across the board. Any animal, any person, I tend to go bigger with the eyes. And it, that's actually a natural thing. Um, because we generally put a lot of focus on the eyes as humans. So that's my excuse for myself. Um, so I went in and added some detail. I, I do want to be like, um, honest here that like, you know, that again, this is just studies. We're not here to kind of hyper detail, hyper focus. If you guys do want me to do a tutorial on maybe painting these, or how to do color studies of horses and all that stuff. Um, let me know, comments below. Um, go ahead and fill that section up with what you guys want me to do next. But uh, for this, you know, keep it loose, just explore. You know, I this was kind of a requested video and so this is one of the poses right there. So one of the questions was, how do you draw a horse from the front, right? We, we kind of know and we see horses from the side all the time. And it's kind of hard to find references to um, of horses from specific angles, especially when you need it for something. So finding these and practicing them is going to be your best bet. You're going to have to generally make up some stuff on the spot when you're drawing horses in whatever format you're drawing. Um, I did a storyboard once where it was like Old West themed and the horse was cartoony, but um, I didn't have all the references I need, obviously, because, you know, it's I'm making up a story as I go. So I need to be able to have a reference like this, but then be able to kind of move the camera around it in my head and understand that. So again, you got to start with those simple shapes, understand volume in space and everything from there can be pieced together. You know, again, things can be off. They don't have to be 100% proportional, 
But if you're kind of understanding those base ideas and you're applying the techniques shown, you're gonna get a believable result at the end of the day. <clears throat> so this guy kind of had a funky stance here with like his leg kind of bowed out there at the bottom. Um, but I did like it. I don't know, it's like he's about to start running or something. So I kind of overemphasized that a little bit on mine having fun with the pose. Um, but as you guys can see, like I really just kind of played up that idea of volume. You got the front half, you have this like big kind of bulged out stomach on both sides, and then you have that back squared off just rump section, right? So have fun with this and really try to understand how these things are overlapping and moving back in space. All right, so a pretty good one to break down here. We have a horse from the side, but just slightly off the side, right? We're, we're almost entering that three quarter kind of zone, which is just probably a pretty common um, pose that you would have to draw a horse in, in general. It's gonna look a lot more interesting and dynamic than if you drew a horse just flat from the side. So this is definitely a good pose to learn. On this one, we're seeing a bit of the side of the head. So again, I played up that cheek. A good example for this guys too is go go look at like Tangled or any Disney cartoon like Mulan where they have like exaggerated horses and see the features that they play up. Um, that's always gonna be one of your best bets of like understanding what are the dominant features of a horse that you need to make happen in order to make it believable, right? you don't have to put everything in all the time. Um, here we do, we're studying real horses, but when you're making your own decisions from imagination or you're making your own story, it's cartoony, whatever it is, it um, it helps to know what features you need and what you don't. Now, if you guys see my little dials going down, my little marks there going down the page, sometimes I need some guides. So I took the head, um, it was from the bottom of the mouth to the top of the head there. And I just moved it down. It's about four heads tall. And then I use those measurements there. So um, I also did those going off to the side. I, I measured the width and I took those over and I think it's about four heads on the side as well. Um, I, again, this just kind of gives me some peace of mind. It, it lets me know where to place some things and it makes it less of a thinking process for me and more of a drawing process once I get these lines in so if you guys haven't tried this already i do recommend you spending some time with this learning proportions i understand can be pretty tedious boring and not fun right um but it's going to be a really essential part if you want to know actually how to draw horses learning how to draw them correct and proportional is going to be the key to then drawing them loose cartoony so you want to kind of make sure you have a good balance and understanding of what's going on here so this drawing is a little bit longer because i was really trying to be detailed with it and i left in some of my mistakes here for you guys to see um catching my proportions so i kind of like measured that arm um up i drew a straight line up from that arm and just kind of measured where it lined up on the, the neckline, right? And then I just kind of placed it there for myself. So I noticed it was slightly in front of where that shoulder blade bump is. So I had to move it back, or sorry, forward towards the head a little bit. If you are drawing traditional, this is why you draw light, all right? Um, if you're drawing digital, I mean, you can make as many mistakes as you want, right? But just don't be afraid to fix those mistakes. I think sometimes we get frustrated. We don't want to go back and fix it because we already committed all this time. But go back and fix it, you know, make your studies as accurate as you can. You guys can see my proportions aren't exact here. I got kind of a long torso going on. But if I took the photo away, you wouldn't even know and it would be just as believable. And that's again, the point that I'm trying to get across of what we're trying to achieve with these horse drawings, right? All right, so this is the last drawing that I deemed essential here. The other ones are gonna kind of speed by a little quick. 
Um, but I really wanted to emphasize here too, if drawing horses is something you intend to do, drawing them with people is probably going to be a scenario that happens quite often um, as we happen to be horse riding beings, right? Throughout history, we know this, it's in movies. Um, so understanding the size relationship between horses and humans is really important. Obviously it's varied because there's different species of horses and there's different sizes of humans. So, you know, there is not going to be any golden rule of where a human lines up on a horse, but you want to kind of explore and experiment with that some, as much as possible. So find pictures like this, find pictures with people sitting on horses, um, jumping with horses, uh, all, all of those things. And you, you'll get these really cool dynamic angles. And you can explore how people kind of form and sit into the horse saddle, right onto the horse's back. So, you know, not going too much into the detail on the human here, mainly just cared about the horse. I do want to say also learning from a silhouette is a really good thing too. If you find that all those details are kind of overcomplicating things right now, jumping into a silhouette like this is, it could be a nice way to simplify. All right, so now we're jumping into a little bit of some speedy ones here. Um, not speedy because I drew them that way, but speedy because I'm trying to make sure this video doesn't hit 30 minutes. But I went in and picked out some interesting portraits here, right? Or not portraits, pictures of horses doing different things. Again, we want to understand how um, these creatures work in a multitude of ways, and they can fully drop their heads to the ground and lift it up higher as well, right? So those are movements that you want to be aware of. It's part of their movement patterns. And it's just like if you're learning how to draw a person lying down, a person sitting down, a person doing an action, right? We, we have to learn to then do this with other subjects that we're trying to draw from. So if getting stronger at horses is the name of the game, then you're gonna to wanna to challenge yourself with a bunch of different poses. So we did a front view. I thought, I mean, you know, we had to do a back view. I don't know why this horse looks so sad. One of you guys did something to him, I'm sure. Um, confess what you did in the comments. It's really rude. I don't know why you would do that to him. But anyways, so we're seeing from the back of him a little bit from the side, same concept as when we're drawing from the front, the exact same concept. You're just drawing booty first. So the, the butt is overlapping the ribs and the chest and then the neck. You can see that if we're just talking about where things proportionally come out of, the neck is connecting to the middle of like the, the rump area right there, right? So drawing from imagination, we probably wouldn't place this there. This is why having this now having drawn this and having this in the back of your mind you can start to place this within your pictures where you don't have references all right so this is the last drawing that i included i did have to take a couple out to fit in the time frame of this video um, but this is one of my favorite ones you guys can see it on the thumbnail again um this is just kind of what embodies why we do horse drawing so everything else was nice proportional you know we got some basic poses of horses kind of flat kind of static um, and here we have generally how i would need to know how to draw horses right so i love drawing old western things i have an old western storyboard for my portfolio i'm working on so this is what i need to build my skills on right not so much the basics because i've kind of kind of got those down you know i'm not a pro but i got those down and this is what I want to work on. So I think you guys should also figure out what you want to work on within your own animal drawings as well. Now we got a running pose here. Um, the horse is in motion. You have an action with the person in the back. And this is really good because sometimes it's hard to place where does the person's weight sit on a horse? How much of the person would you see? Are they completely hidden by the head? Um, do they pop up over the head? So having this reference is really good. Um, 
obviously you have some different things here. Like she's kind of standing in um, the the stiltster, so she's a little higher up than she probably would be if she was sitting down, right? But she's taking an action. She's about to fire a bow, so she's kind of readying herself. This pose definitely is a challenge, but if you guys can take this one on, I highly recommend that you do. It's it's going to take you to a new level on the drawing scale for these horses. Learning how their body moves is part of the process of drawing as well. So when someone is in a full run or a horse is in a full run, what are their bones doing, right? So identify those zigzags. Remember, we have those four bones of the arms where do you see those right don't ignore that they exist you can simplify and look for the simple shape of what the leg is creating but just don't forget that the bones are in there um because you just if you so if you guys look at my back leg you can see how it kind of has like a step feature to it right the one i just drew a little bit ago if i ignored that and i just kind of went with the bumps that i see on the picture it would just look like i drew a lumpy sausage for a leg that's what I want you guys to avoid. That's why I showed those anatomy pictures in the beginning. All right, guys, this video doesn't have too much longer. I'm going to let it end here with this drawing of this epic person shooting this bow. Thank you guys so much for watching. Again, if you want any more content on animal drawing or you want me to expand more on horse drawing, whatever it is, please let me know in the comments below. I want to help you guys out with that. If you have any suggestions for any other videos beyond animal drawing, of course, let me know as well. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.